Good morning. Well, it's afternoon now. <laughs> Just about, yeah. I slept in, I took the day off. It's been, well, I guess before that, it's been a while since we did a video together. Mm -hmm. Both of us, it's been a whole lot of kitchen work lately. And today is Friday. It's no longer morning. And I took the day off work today because it was gonna be nice. We actually were gonna go to the cabin this weekend, but it was like supposed to rain for like 24 hours straight. Yeah. And we figured, let's just stay home and- Do some stuff, get caught up around here. Yep, winter will be coming before you know it. Yep. So now that the majority of my kitchen preserving work is done, mm -hmm. the garden season's kind of wrapped up. Do you think this might start our weekend in review back? Maybe. It's harder to... One of the things that we found was it's easier for us and more beneficial to our channel to do smaller videos over the weekend instead of one big video. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back into it. Um, more like a sure. vlog style versus exactly what we're doing every day. Right. Yeah. So that brings us to today's video. I'm about to head out to the garden. I've got a lot of garden beds to put to sleep for the winter and uh, just some cleanup maintenance stuff going on. And you've got a big laundry list of Yeah, stuff. I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> most of that tree damage from the storm that we had a while back has been, most of it's been cleaned up. I didn't share a lot of that with you guys because just chopping wood. Yeah, I'm just I'm just cutting wood with a chainsaw, hauling it back to the burn pile and how much can people watch that? But most of it's cleaned up, but there's still some that needs to be taken care of. We did get a load of wood chips delivered the other day. We did. Um, for free, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I could think we could use like three more. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll put in a call and hopefully get some more here pretty soon, but we might get some of the wood chips spread today. We gotta save some of that for my nephew. Bryce, if you're watching, Mama told me you're in trouble and you're coming to the farm to work off some of your punishment. So <laughs> we got plenty of work for you, buddy. Mm -hmm. We'll save some for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you have a funny story to tell them later. Yeah. So stick around. Yeah. Especially. Throughout this video, we'll <laughs> share some tidbits of Rachel's adventures from last night. Oh, uh, yeah. It was miserable. <laughs> Funny uh, now, but not funny, funny during. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll see you guys when we're out there. All right. <laughs> Let's go. So my garden shed's a mess, so ignore it. I can't keep this thing clean to save my life. So I still have all my onions that I have to braid. I don't know if you guys can see in here with it being dark. I might get that done later this evening, but I'm getting the lawnmower because because this time of the year is perfect for getting mulch for your garden. So I know three full bags gives me enough mulch for one garden bed. As the leaves fall, Todd saves me spots around the yard to mow so I can mulch my garden. So that's what I'm doing. bed's pretty much done. I'm gonna just get a couple of these little weeds out. Um, I have a kale still growing and a few carrots and some turnips at the end. So that's all I do is I come through and I put a good, I would say three to four inches of mulch on top for the winter. Um, and one four by, four foot by eight foot bed is usually for me and my size push mower, three um, bags worth. Woo! A nice kohlrabi down here growing. So this is a bed I did two weeks ago because it was already done. And you can see it's just grass and leaves. So when you're mowing, if you're gonna do this and you're mowing your backyard, find a area that has a good mix of nitrogen and carbon. Um, there's sticks in here and all kinds of good stuff. 
So this will sit just like this over winter. Um, I did start also my root stout beds as well. And so I think I have one, two, three, you know, a lot to do. So <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this for a while. It's been uh, three years worth of learning with Todd on how much area he needs to leave me of the backyard so I can mow it for my mulch. So you're gonna have to work that out with your partner. While Rachel's working on that, I'll update you guys on my tree situation. I can see the mulberry tree behind us, as you saw in the previous video, which I'll, I'll put a link to it up above. Huge chunk of that came off. I got all that cleaned up there. The, this is where our trumpet vine tree thing was in the front of our house. That's been cleaned up. I basically used my tractor with the pallet forks on the front, and I just basically lifted up the whole thing and threw it in a burn pile one day. It burned up nice and quick, it was all dead. On the mulberry tree, you can see there's one that's still kind of upright and then two that are leaning over. Uh, I called the power company and they sent out a trimming service because it was touching the power lines up there. So they cleaned it up for me quite a bit, but I still want to take down these two that are leaning to the right. I don't think I'm going to tackle it today. I'm going to save it for another day. So I need to borrow somebody's ladder. We don't have a really tall ladder for some reason. We've just never owned one. What I will tackle today though is what I'll show you next. So this is what I will tackle today. This is the pine tree on the corner of our property. When the wind blew it over, it basically took the root system like this. When I cut the tree, it fell back up. So I'm gonna hook my truck up to this guy, try to pull him out of here today. We'll get the saw if we need it. We'll get the tractor with the front end loader if we need it so we can haul this stump out to the burn pile, get this all cleaned up. It's gonna leave a big hole. It's gonna leave a big crater in our yard, but I'm gonna order, we have quite a few craters in our yard right now between things like the tree, roots that I pulled out in our food forest. We have a lot of ruts in our yard from the wedding that we had this spring when we had all that rain, everybody parked in our yard. And I wanna get all that stuff filled in this fall. So I am gonna order about, I'm thinking three to four loads of topsoil to come in and fill in all these low spots. Let's see what happens. I tried to move it with my tractor with the front end loader and it's just too much dirt in it. It's really heavy. So I figured my truck, I can at least get it out of there, get it out of the, out of the ground, get it tipped over. And then we can try to chisel some dirt off of it. The root system's really not very big on it. Most pine trees aren't, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. <laughs> it's way bigger than I thought it was. Okay, we got some work cut out for us now. We got last bag on this bed. And then we'll move on to another one. So now that I got that bed done, I think it's a good stopping point to tell you guys about yesterday and exactly what happened. So yeah, if you caught last Friday's video or maybe it got put out Saturday, I had gone to the farmer's market and got all the, you know, big basket of jalapeno peppers and uh, like a decent size amount of chilies. And earlier in the week, a few days ago, I had already canned up a whole bunch of cowboy candy. And we use a lot of canned chilies and when we cook like Mexican dishes and you know, stew chilies and stuff like that. So that's what I wanted to do with the rest of them. So anyway, part of that process is you have to roast them and skin them. So I went through that process and I've heard, you know, this is my first time skinning peppers I, and I had read you should wear gloves. I was thinking you just wear gloves so you don't like wipe your face. 
um, you know, and get it in your eyes and stuff. So I told myself, I'll just be careful. I'll wash my hands when I'm done. Well, I had like half a bushel um, to do. And about halfway through that process, you know, my, my hands start tingling. So I go and wash them. And by the, I had like maybe a quarter of the chili peppers to go left. And I was like, yeah, I'm done. My hands are on fire. It was all I could do to get them jarred up, canned. And I'm like bent over the sink, scrubbing and washing. I cannot get my hands to stop feeling like they're on fire. Todd gets home and we try looking up all kinds of remedies. Needless to say, from five o'clock until 9.30, I was trying everything. Every 10 minutes, something else was on my hands trying to get the burn to stop. And I decided maybe if I do go to bed and just fall asleep, I can sleep through this. No such luck. Every 10 minutes, I was up and out of bed, putting more cornstarch on my hands, dousing it with alcohol, washing it with Dawn dish soap, everything I've read. So I told him, I'm not gonna bother you while you try to sleep. I'm gonna go sleep downstairs because I'm gonna be up and down all night long. And guys, I mean, I was literally thinking about going to quick care, the emergency room to get like a steroid shot, something to make this pain go away. It was horrible. Poor Todd couldn't do anything to help me and I was getting angry that there was no solution. Here's the funny part. So it's like three in the morning and I still have not slept. I'm soaking them like while I'm trying to lay on the couch in ice water just to get some relief. I have to go to the bathroom. And it dawned on me as I'm walking to the bathroom, I grew up down by the Gulf Coast, and if you got stung by a jellyfish or a Portuguese man-o-war, the immediate solution is to pee on it wherever the sting is or have somebody pee on it because it instantly dissolves whatever that reaction is. So, yeah, that's what I did. I, <laughs> I had had enough. I was beyond any hope, I was ready to go to the emergency room. So I thought, last ditch effort, Rachel, just pee on your hands. And good thing I had to pee a lot. And guys, it worked. That's the crazy thing. My right hand was the hand I was working with, so it wasn't holding the peppers like my left hand was. So my left hand, it took about maybe two more soaks in the ice water after that home remedy occurred. Um, but my right hand was instantly resolved. So, moral of the story is, stay hydrated, because you never know when you're gonna need to pee for a reason. So I definitely don't know what's gonna work best for this. Shovel's not too effective. I'm gonna try next to start cutting away some of the roots and see if that'll make it smaller. And at least once a root is cut off, it'll be easier to get the dirt off of it and ultimately make this smaller. Not too bad. Definitely not something you want to go after with a chainsaw. Your blade won't last. Oh, it's full of ants in there. Your, your blade on your chainsaw will not. It is not designed for this. Little Sawzall, Milwaukee cordless. Buzzed right through the first one. It's filled with ants. Well, I've removed about a bucket load worth of roots so far and a lot of dirt. And I'm back the tractor up a little bit and use my truck and see if it's a little looser now than it was before. How was your project? Yeah, I just had a big oops. <laughs> what did you do? So here's a tip for you. When you're mowing your grass and you're wanting to use the mulch for your garden, make sure the bag's on it. I 
<laughs> I just spent, had the best spot back there. It had so many leaves and grass. The grass was thick and green. Oh, it was going to be great mulch. There's get, the spot with the mulch leaves know. back there. And I get all the way up here and go to reach for the bag and the bag's not on. <laughs> oh, what a waste. Oh, it's, totally. <laughs> it's not a waste because it's mulching the yard, but who cares about the yard? Yeah, and at the exact same moment, yeah, you did this and you went to go get your bag. You did that. I screwed up something <laughs> too. I'll show you. <laughs> so I am always so careful and so anal about making sure the latches on my skid steer quick attach on the big front of my front end loader are latched properly. <laughs> Bringing over this bucket of roots to dump in the fire. I dumped them in the fire. At least it's not lit. Now I gotta figure out how to get this 400 pound piece of steel out of my fire pit. It looks like some of these big roots that I cut actually did the trick. It's one big one there, another big one here. So there was still a lot holding this tree in place. I'm talking to myself like I do a lot out in the garden, pulling this creeping Charlie. One of the things that I said to myself was, nothing will make a Christian want to lose their sanctification like dealing with creeping Charlie. I've wanted to cuss at least five times. And then I decided to change my attitude and start talking to Jesus and say, all right, show me the weeds in my life and what do I need to get rid of and pull out and let go of and kind of changes your attitude a little bit. But that's all I'm doing. I'm just cleaning the creeping Charlie out that always creeps in from the edges uh, so I can put a new mulch layer down because I don't want to give it a, as much of a fighting chance next year. So anyway, Talk to yourself in the garden. It's very therapeutic. Well, we both just stopped to take a little break. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. We started getting hungry. We had a late breakfast this morning. I took Rachel out to Cracker Barrel about 11 o'clock to have breakfast. She really wanted pecan pancakes. And after the night she had last night of being up until three or four or whatever it was in the morning, I felt like she deserved it. In fact, she just went in the house and uh, went upstairs to the bedroom. She's gonna take a nap for a couple hours. I just had some lunch and I got an alert on my phone that said rain is coming, which I didn't think it was gonna rain, but it is. I really wanna get this cleaned up and get this dirt pushed back into that crater before the rain comes and then it all gets hard and it's harder to move. So I'm gonna try to get this last root over here pulled out and get it loaded into the bucket of the tractor. Take what's left here, dump it back in the fire pit and try to get this hole filled in.
How was your nap? <clears throat> Much needed. <laughs> yeah, you feel better. Yes. Look at that, guys. Remember when I made those cheddar zucchini scones? Breaking them out for dinner tonight. It smells so good. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, having some of our Mexican chicken soup that I can, just a quick and easy dinner. Mmm. This smells good. Try dunking that in your soup. Okay. Lorraine's finally did move in. I, while Rachel was taking her nap, I cleaned up the rest of the stuff out there, put the tractor away, put the lawnmower away, the gas away, and started editing this video. Yay! <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us again for a little bit of mix up from what we've been doing, very task oriented. And well, today was task oriented. We still kind of just got around and shared a little bit of extra. And Dan's got a football game tonight you're going to? Yeah, I'm excited. Are I'm you gonna, gonna take, be taking pictures? Yeah, I'm gonna take photos. And it's gonna be really fun, I'm excited. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll probably get some good muddy shots with the rain, with the guys being muddy. And I'm gonna be wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's on yearbook staff this year, so she's gotta take your uh, photos for the yearbook. All right guys, hope you enjoy your night and we'll we got a lot more planned this weekend, I think. We do. The uh, rains are supposed to stop by morning tomorrow. Tomorrow will be our Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably film again tomorrow. See you guys later. Bye-bye.